wanted to sleep some more. Why do we always have to wake up super early because of these annoying alarm clocks? You hate everything, Brian. You're always tired and sleepy. When was the last time you didn't yawn? <laughs> she has a point, Brian. You've always been like this. Whatever. You guys just don't get it. You don't realize how comfortable sleep is. Sleep is the best thing in the world. There's nothing better than sleep. I can think of something better than sleep. Playing tag. Seriously? The first thing you want to do when we wake up is play tag? You want to play tag right now in the house? Of course. Why not? What's wrong with playing tag? <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. But I'm warning you. I'm going to win, as always. I'm still undefeated in tag. <laughs> You're so annoying, Brian. You're going to lose one day, and that day is today. <gasps> what are you kids doing? Stop running around the living room. You're going to break something. Gosh, kids are so annoying. Sorry, Mom. I just wanted to teach Kale and Jess over here a lesson. They think they'll be able to beat me at tag one day, but I wanted to remind them that it's impossible. Do you see what I mean now, Kale? And Jess, I run so fast that you can't even catch up to me. Then why do we have a round two? We'll see who wins then. Stop it! All of you, no more tag! This house isn't a playground! Oh my You've already broken about half of the furniture in the living room from all the times you play tag. And I think that's enough. I don't want any more damage. All right, Mom. Well, I guess we can play tag outside in the backyard during the afternoon. Anyways, can you make breakfast for us, Mom? I'm really hungry. I'm hungry too. I don't think I had dinner yesterday, so that's probably why. I can't start my day properly without a plate of pancakes. I want breakfast too. Please give us breakfast, Mom. 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 Please please give us breakfast, Mom. Please give us breakfast, Mom. All right, all right. I heard you all the first time. Just wait at the dining table. Breakfast will be ready in about 15 minutes. Why is mom always so angry at us? We're just trying to have fun, that's all. She's the one who told us that your childhood is the most precious time of your life, so you should enjoy it before you grow up. I don't know, but she's been like that for the past two years now. She gets really annoyed by everything. I overheard her talking to someone on the phone and complaining about how hard it is to pay for our school tuition and the rent for our house. She's having problems with her business, so that's probably why she's so stressed. I wish there was some way, any way we could help her. But we're just kids. There's nothing we can do. Well, we can try to cheer her up, right? Maybe we can invite her to play tag with us. Yeah, that's a great idea. I'm sure she would love to play tag with us. You guys don't know who mom is at all. I don't think it's a good idea, but oh well, I guess it's worth a try. Let's ask her to play tag in the afternoon. Okay, that sounds good, but we need to eat breakfast first. I'm actually really hungry right now. It's because of a lot of practice, that's all. I kept making pancakes until I eventually got really good at the recipe. The first few attempts were obviously really bad, of course, but I got better over time, so no matter how bad you think you are, always try your best and eventually you'll succeed. Oh, all right. I guess that makes sense. Maybe I should start making pancakes too. Yes, that would be really helpful. 
grateful. I'm tired of always making food for you kids. Like, there is nothing you kids can do without me. You kids can't do anything on your own. You can't go to school on your own. You can't shower on your own. You can't cook on your own. I have to babysit you the whole way. And I still have to work my job at the same time. You kids are going to make me go crazy one day. I swear to God. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm really sorry that you feel that way. We want to try and help you out as much as possible. If there's any way we can help, just tell us. We'll learn how to cook on our own if you want. No, thank you. I don't want to return from work to a burnt house. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Just do whatever you want. All right, we're sorry for being so annoying, Mom. I promise we won't create any more problems for you. Anyways, we're going to play tag in the afternoon. Do you want to join us? Do I look like someone that would play tag with a bunch of kids? Give me a break. I'm going through so much stress right now and there's so much work at my company and you kids think I should just forget about all of that work and play tag with you? You kids will never understand what I go through. Just finish your pancakes quickly and clean your dishes on your own this time. I'm not cleaning them for you. I'm leaving for work now. Don't destroy the house while I'm gone. told you, you don't know mom at all. There's no way she was ever going to say yes to playing tag with us. You were right then, but I don't like how she's so mean to us. When we asked her if there was any way we could help out, she just said, I don't know. If she wants us to learn cooking or help in any other way, she should tell us so, right? I guess she doesn't trust us to do it on her own. But then again, she gets really frustrated doing all the work for us. So she's stuck in the middle. Well, it's her birthday tomorrow, right? We should plan a super big surprise for her to make her happy. That's a great idea. I was just thinking of getting a cake and cutting it with her. But if we plan a super big surprise for her, that'll make her even happier. Maybe that would relieve a bit of the stress that she's feeling at work these days. Let's get to work! Let's plan a big surprise party for her! Ready? She's going to walk through that door in five minutes. We only have five minutes left, guys. Come on. Okay, Brian. We have all the balloons on the walls. We have the cake. We have the birthday card. We have the music ready to play when she comes in. We have confetti. I think that's everything. What about the presents? Where are the presents? Guys, where are the presents? Ah, stop being so annoying. The presents are right here. They've been here for a very long time. That's the first thing I put there. Now, we have everything ready for mom's surprise birthday party. Not being annoying, Kale. I'm just being careful. I want this surprise to be as good as possible for mom. I want her to be super happy when she comes into this house and see how much we plan for this surprise party. It's going to make her feel special and it's going to show her how much we actually love her. Yes, I know. It's just that your default personality is really annoying. So yeah. All right, so I guess we just have to wait now. Let's wait until mom arrives. Got out of her car. Be ready, Kale and Jess. <laughs> What's this notification on my phone? It's from Roblox. What? There's no way! I didn't buy this on Roblox! Did someone hack into my account? What happened, Brian? What's the matter? Why is there a zero Robux in my Roblox account? Someone just transferred all my Robux to someone else's account using my account. Oh? 
Um, well, you see, I might have given your Roblox account password to one of my friends. What? Are you serious right now? Why would you do that, Gail? You can't just give my account password to anyone you want. She's not just anyone. She's one of my best friends. She really wanted to buy this one thing from the Roblox store. But her parents wouldn't let her get any Robux. So I thought I could give her your Robux to her. Don't worry, she only used your account for the Robux, nothing else. Guys, calm down. You didn't even think of asking me? What's wrong with you, Kale? How could you do this to me? I trusted you with my account. Those were my Robux. And that was my Roblox account. If you want to share it with anyone other than Jess, you have to ask me for it. I don't need to ask you for anything. She was my best friend, and I wanted to help her out. That's all. I don't regret anything. That's it. I've had enough of you. Ah, that was so cold. Oh my gosh, are you serious, Brian? I can't believe you right now. That's what you get. I should throw even more water on you, but I'm going to stop right there because you're still my sister. You think I'm just going to let you splash cold water on me and get away with it? Ah, you threw milk all over my shirt! You're gonna pay for that! Done! The cake! The cake! Uh, this is all your fault, Kale! My fault? You're the one who started it by throwing ice cold water on me! You should learn to control your anger better! I wouldn't have been angry at you if you didn't transfer my Robux to some random person without asking me first! Both of you need to calm down! Mom is going to be here any minute now! We need to surprise her! I need to deal with Kale first. Finally, I am not going to pick up any more calls from work. Work is finally over, thank God. And what are these kids doing? I can hear them all the way in the garage. <laughs> it's the weekend tomorrow, so I'll finally get a short break to relax. I just want to enjoy my birthday tonight without any distractions. I'll take the kids with me and get a cake, and then we'll cut the cake together once we come back. It's a pretty simple way to celebrate, but it's more than enough for me. You can run as much as you want, but you can't hide. Hey, Mom! I didn't see you there. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey, Mom. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mom. <laughs> what on earth did you kids do to my house? Look at the living room. It's a complete mess. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm really sorry. Kale stole all of my Robux without asking me. And because of that, we both started... Robux? Seriously? So this whole thing was because of Robux. You destroyed the living room of this house just because she took a few Robux from you. You kids are never going to grow up, are you? I'm so fed up with you. You could have at least let me have a good day on my birthday. But no, you won't even spare me even when it's my birthday. Please don't say that, Mom. We didn't mean to do this. We really didn't. It was all an accident. We were planning a huge... I don't want to listen to anything anymore. I've seen enough. You know what? This is it. I'm fed up with you all. Tomorrow, I'm settling this once and for all. Settling this once and for all. What does she mean by that? What is she going to do tomorrow? Are you happy now, Kale? You ruined our whole surprise. This is probably the worst birthday that mom has ever had. It's all because of you. Don't point fingers at me. You're the one who started it. You're the one with the short temper. And you're the one who threw ice cold water on me. You expect me to just stand there after you throw ice cold water on my face? Shut up, both of you. Shut up. Do you both 
both even realize what you've just done? You ruined Mom's birthday for her. Birthdays only come once a year, and you both ruined it completely. I don't care whose fault it was for sending the Robux and whose fault it wasn't. You both could have talked about this after Mom's birthday was over. Why did you have to start fighting on the spot and ruin Mom's birthday? Couldn't you wait a few hours? Or until tomorrow? You could have argued as much as you wanted after the party was over. But you chose to argue on the spot and ruin Mom's birthday. Are you happy now? You should be embarrassed. Now we can't even eat cake. You're, you're right, Jess. I just... I don't know. I got really angry. I worked really hard to get those Robux. I had to study hard in school so mom could give me money. And then I would save that money for Robux. You could have used that money for so many better things, but you wanted it all on Robux. Imagine studying hard just so you can get Robux. Do you even realize what you're saying, Brian? You could have bought something to help mom in the house with all the money you've saved. But that's a whole other topic. I don't even know what to say to the both of you. Congratulations for ruining mom's birthday. She says she's going to do something tomorrow to settle things once and for all. I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound like any good. So be ready. I would give you a medal of honor for your commendable job today if I could. Losers. Ryan, I'm I'm sorry. I should have asked you before. Moscow, I don't want to talk to you. Mom, where are you taking us? You'll find out soon enough. I'm fed up with you three, so this is the only solution I can think of. And once I do this, my life will become so much better. And my stress levels are going to decrease by 80%. You kids are the main reason for my high stress levels, so the only logical solution to decreasing my stress is to get rid of the stress. You three! Get rid of us? What do you mean by that, Mom? We said we're sorry for ruining your birthday, Mom. We're your children. We love you a lot. You can't just get rid of us. Yes, I can, and I will. My patience has reached its limit. I'm, I'm just not made to be a mother. Raising children is not for me. I have better things to do than raise a family. <sighs> now, get in the car. You have three seconds. Place. Where are we? Mom, please don't do this. You can't do this. I love you, Mom. I want to stay with you. I'm sorry for everything I did. I promise I'll never do it again. I swear. Please, Mom. Don't cry, Kale. I'm sure Mom just wants to adopt someone. Yeah, that's right. We're going to get a new brother or a sister. This is the Brookhaven Adoption Center, Brian. Mom is going to leave us at the adoption center. What? No way! This was the only solution. I can finally be at peace after I leave you kids here. Mom, you're joking, right? You would never do this. No mom would ever leave her own kids at the adoption center. Uh, I know we're really annoying. Uh, I know we create a lot of problems for you, but we're willing to change. Please, mom, I'm really sorry. I'll do whatever it takes to make it up to you, I promise. Please forgive us. We love you, mom. We really love you. We were planning a surprise party for you yesterday. We wanted to make you feel special. I'm sorry it went the way it did, but we all had good intentions. We really love you, Mom. Please don't leave us. Shut up! Just shut up! Even your voice is making my ears ring. I made my decision already. I'm not keeping you at the house anymore. I'm leaving you here. I don't care what happens to you now. Your life is your own. You'll probably get adopted into a better family. Family where your parents don't have to deal with that much stress and give you the time and love you need. This is actually a good thing for you kids, so I don't know why you're so sad about it. Because you're our real mom. I want to stay with my real mom, not some other family. We love you, mom. I don't care. It's too late. I'm fed up with you, and I'm leaving you here. Oh, 
you want to leave all three of your kids at this adoption center? Yes, I do. Um, all right then. May I please know the reason for your decision? I'm not financially stable enough to raise my kids at this point in time. They're better off than some other family. All right then. Please sign these papers to complete the process. Goodbye, kids. Have a good life ahead. This. I can't believe mom is leaving us. How could she do something like this? Are you happy now killing Brian? Huh? I guess your Robux was worth more than our family. I'm putting the blame on me for everything. I feel like her leaving us here was a long time coming anyways. It's not just the incident that happened yesterday. She's clearly been fed up with us since the very beginning. Maybe we can still try to go and apologize to her again. We'll apologize even better this time. There's no point, Kale. She didn't even look behind to see us one last time when she was leaving. She's done with us. She's never going to ask about us ever again. It's all over. We have no choice but to stay here now. I guess we're going to find a new family. I'm really sorry for what happened. If you would kindly follow me, I'll take all three of you to your room. We stayed at the adoption center for three weeks without anyone being interested in adopting us, which made sense to me. People were probably looking to adopt really little kids, and we were too old for anyone to want to adopt us. We felt really weird staying at this adoption center because everyone was so much younger than us. We definitely didn't belong here, but mom didn't want to keep us at her house. I don't know if we'll ever get adopted by anyone. We might just end up staying at this adoption center forever. I really hope not. The people here are nice to us, but this isn't the kind of life I want to live. Please, please adopt us someone. Please. I really miss mom. I want to go back to mom. We should apologize to her again. We really should. Why should we, Jess? She was a mean mother, and that's a fact. <sighs> she got tired of us, and she didn't want anything to do with us. We have to stick together. We don't need mom. What, what are you saying? That doesn't sound like something you would say. I've simply accepted the truth. It's time you do too. I've accepted that mom was mean to us because a good mom wouldn't throw all of her anger out at her children on a daily basis. A good mom would love her children and treat them with care and love, which our mom didn't. She was always angry at us, always yelling at us, and always making us feel bad. And what kind of mom leaves their children at an adoption center because she's fed up with us? Would you call that a good mom? You can ask any person and they would say no. So yes, Brian, she was and will be a meanie. Maybe it's a good thing that she left us here because now we have a chance of finding a family that actually cares about us and loves us. You shouldn't be saying those things. Whether she was good or not, she's still our mom. Our real mom. I don't care. I don't want to see her face ever again. I have great news for you. Someone is interested in adopting you. Oh my gosh, really? Finally, finally! I thought we were going to stay at this adoption center forever. The parents would like to meet you in person. Hey there, kids. Look at you three. You look adorable. Well, then I guess that settles it. We want to adopt him, ma'am. Please, bring the papers for us to sign. Sure, I'll be right back.
It's actually happening. We're getting a new family. They're going to be our new parents. Our dad left our family a few years after we were born, so I don't remember him at all. I've never experienced what it's like to have a dad. I'm really excited. They seem like really nice people. I hope they are. Well then, welcome to the family. We're going to treat you the best we can. We promise you that. So how was breakfast, Kale? Mom, why are you even asking? It's amazing! Breakfast is always amazing! It's a hundred times better than my cooking! <laughs> That's amazing! But remember, you're moving out of the city for your job as a lawyer, right? You'll have to cook on your own once you start that job. I won't be there to cook for you. I know, Mom. That's why I'm enjoying your cooking while I still can. <laughs> I can't even imagine you living alone. Your pancakes taste like rocks, and your milkshakes taste like seawater. I wonder how you're gonna survive on your own. I don't think you can. At least I know how to cook, Brian. Why don't you try cooking something? I bet you would burn the house down on your first attempt. <laughs> I don't need to cook anything, because I have my mom. I'm not moving out of the city for my job, unlike you. Sucks to be you, doesn't it? I'm going to be earning twice as much as you, so I'm the one who's going to get the last laugh. You're becoming an assistant professor for cybersecurity. That literally pays nothing. Hey, it's the stars! You have no idea how hard it is to become a professor. I was able to become an assistant professor much earlier than all of my classmates. I'm actually really talented at cybersecurity. And you have no idea how hard it is to become a lawyer. I became a lawyer five years earlier than the average person does. So what's the difference? <laughs> you both are never going to change, are you? You still fight like little children. I feel like the only grown-up here. You have no room to talk, Jess. You haven't even graduated university yet. Leave this conversation to the grown-ups. Well, if you're finally done arguing, you can continue after your breakfast. Mom has to clean the dishes after this. Actually, can I clean the dishes instead, Mom? I want to practice, since I'll be living on my own once I become a lawyer. <laughs> wow, Kale. You're volunteering to clean the dishes on your own? I like the spirit. All right, then. Go ahead. It's good for me. <laughs> funny how fast time flies by. We're already adults now. We're about to get our own jobs. As much as I hate you, Kale, I might miss you a little bit when you're gone. Aw, thanks for lying, Ryan. I might miss you a little bit too. Hey, I was being honest. I'm actually going to miss you. I'm going to miss all of our arguments and fights. They actually made my day a lot better. <laughs> it was fun all the time. You're making it sound like we're never going to see each other again. Jeez, Brian. We're still going to visit each other whenever we have holidays or vacations, so don't worry. I'm going to miss you a lot too, Kale. Well then, before you leave today, let's watch a TV show together one last time. What's this on the news? Breaking news! This is Brandon Foster from Channel One. A woman who lived in Brookhaven City has mysteriously disappeared. She's been missing for the past three weeks and there are no sign of her whereabouts whatsoever. Brookhaven police are unable to find even a single clue about her. Her name is Tessa, and this is an image of her. She's one of the owners of Brookhaven Bank, so her disappearance is most certainly alarming and of concern to the city and government. 
If you see this woman anywhere, please call the authorities immediately. I can't believe this. I can't believe what I'm seeing. That was mom, right? Don't call her mom, Brian. She's not our mom. Our real mom is in this house right now. That's Tessa. And she stopped being our mom ages ago. Kill, I know you're still mad at her for what she did. And I am too. But she looks like she's in real trouble. She's been missing for three weeks? That can't be good. What do you expect me to do? Feel bad about her? Why didn't she feel bad about us when we were crying and begging for her to not leave us at the adoption center? Why didn't she try to take us back home then, huh? I don't care what happens to that woman. It's none of my business. But, Kale, even if she was a bad person, she's still our mom. Our real mom. No one can replace her. Can you really be at peace knowing that she might be in real danger right now? If she's been missing for three weeks, then she's most definitely in danger. No one goes missing for three weeks just like that. We need to do whatever it takes to find her. We might not be able to do much, but we can at least help the cops and the authorities as much as possible and contribute to finding her as soon as possible. Don't even think about it, Jess. I told you, I don't care about what happens to that woman. I don't care where she is, how she is, why she's missing, nothing. It doesn't matter to me at all, okay? I'm done talking about her. Stop being biased. You need to think about this. Like, really think about this, okay? Forget about everything that she did for a second and just think about the fact that you're about to become a lawyer. I know that a lawyer's job isn't to help the cops find missing people or catch criminals, but you still work for the law, right? You believe in bringing justice and helping innocent people as much as possible. And if that innocent person was any other innocent person, you would be willing to help them if it was possible, right? The only reason you don't want to help mom is because you still hold a grudge against her. That's called bias right there. Are you trying to lecture me about the law, Brian? <laughs> I know more about the law than you do, so you don't have to lecture me on how to do my own job. Oh my gosh, I don't even think I can stay in this room for even a second longer, as long as that woman is on TV. I don't feel like staying here at all. I'm going out for a walk. I'll talk to you later. It's really funny how life works, doesn't it? A few minutes after I left the house where I was talking to Brian and Jess, I got a message from my manager that I might have to study the case of a missing person, none other than mom herself. Her disappearance is a really big thing for Brookhaven. Considering how she was one of the owners of the Brookhaven Bank, the government is taking her search really seriously. I'm not sure what my job is going to be as a lawyer, but I'm just going to follow the instructions of my manager and see how it goes. I really don't want to see mom's face again. I always wish that I would never have to, but maybe Brian is right. Maybe I should stop being biased and try to think about this, even though I really don't want to. I have to. How was your first day here? Getting used to living alone already? Uh, not yet, sir. It will take me a bit longer to get used to everything. It's a completely new environment, and I'm living all on my own. Yes, that's understandable. You're still pretty young to be a lawyer, so I imagine this might feel like a lot to take in. Don't worry, though. You'll get used to everything really quickly. You're really bright after all. You're one of the smartest people I've ever seen. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the compliment. Anyways, let's get back to business. You already know that one of the owners of the Brookhaven Bank has been mysteriously missing for the past three weeks, right? The bank was trying to keep it a secret, but the news was eventually let loose. You can't keep a secret like that for so long, right? Anyways, 
There are some suspects and witnesses involved with her missing, and a lot of lawyers have been hired to question them. You, Kale, are one of those lawyers. It's not a difficult job. You just need to question them and try to get as much objective information from them as possible. All right, sir. I will do my best. Also, there's one more reason why you were called here. Well, I think this reason would be more important to you, and I probably should have told you this sooner. What do you mean, sir? What else did you bring me here for? Well, Tessa used to be your mother before she left you at the adoption center, right? How... how did you know, sir? I know everything, Kale. Anyways, since she is your biological mother, you are directly involved in this case by default. Even if you weren't a lawyer, you'd still be involved in this case. The only thing that matters is whether you're involved in a good way or a bad way. What do you mean by that, sir? I'm not sure I understand. All right, let me just put this straight. One of the people suspected of being involved with the disappearance of Tessa is you, Kale. You and your entire family are under suspicion. Considering how you were on bad terms the last time you saw each other, you and your siblings are under very high suspicion, and they're also going to be brought in for police questioning. Wait, what? You can't be serious. I'm very serious about this, Kale. The authorities are taking this case extremely seriously, and they want to question anyone who they might have even a little bit of suspicion with. In your case, there's a lot of suspicion. You and your siblings were on bad terms with her since she left you at the adoption center, so you probably grew up hating her. From a certain perspective, that's perfect motivation to try and get rid of Tessa. Now look, I'm not saying that you did anything to Tessa or planned her possible kidnapping in any way, but the authorities need to be sure of this. They're going to question you and your siblings to get as much information as they need, and your answers will decide whether their suspicions of you are valid or not. I, I have no idea how to respond to this. I haven't seen Tessa in 11 years. I haven't seen her since she left us, and I am not a criminal. I would never kidnap someone. My siblings aren't like that either. We've been living really happy lives ever since we got adopted into our new family. Our new parents are amazing, wonderful people, and we have no complaints in our lives whatsoever. I know, Kale, I know. But that still doesn't change the fact that you're labeled as suspects. But don't worry. If you haven't done anything wrong, there's nothing to worry about. Just answer all the questions the cops ask you honestly and truthfully. And that should be enough, all right? <sighs> all right, sir. How are Brian and Jess going to be questioned? Are they going to be brought here? That won't be necessary. The cops are probably already questioning them at their house as we speak. this at all. So what do you want to ask us, officer? Well, I'm gonna start with some simple questions. When was the last time you met with Tessa? Did you ever see her again after she left you at the adoption center? No, we didn't. We never saw her again. It's been 11 years now. A really long time. Well, that's funny. In her last known location, we found a piece of her jewelry on the floor. A locket that had a picture of her with you both and your sister, Kale. So she didn't forget about us after all. I'm really surprised about that. I mean, I thought she didn't care about us at all. But finding that locket doesn't prove that we met her, right? True. You're right about that. But that definitely does place you under suspicion. We believe Tessa has been looking for her kids before she went missing. Really? She was looking for us? We have good reason to believe so. Just before she disappeared, she came by at the adoption center to ask if they had any information on where you three were. But she didn't get any information. Anyways, moving on. Do you know anyone who might have a problem with Tessa? Someone that really hates her. Someone that doesn't want to ever see her again. Someone that would want to get rid of her. Can you think of anyone? Well... Our father left us when we were little, so I don't really remember much about him. But mom never talked to him at all, so I don't think he would have anything to do with this. And to be honest, all of us really hated mom at one point. That's probably why we're potential suspects, right? The way mom left us at the adoption center made us feel really hurt. But we would never go this far and do something like kidnap her? We're not those kinds of people! So, mom was pretty nice to her work colleagues, so I don't think she has any enemies. None that I know of, at least. 
Alright, thanks for your answers, but I do have a few more questions, though. treating this like a kidnapping. Did mom actually get kidnapped? Is it possible? If she got kidnapped, then it must have been by some really professional criminals or someone really wealthy that organized her kidnapping. That would probably be someone who wants to exploit Brookhaven Bank or weaken it. I'm not sure. I'm just trying to brainstorm ideas. supposed to call Jess and Brian 30 minutes ago. I completely forgot. Oh well, I'm free right now, so I can call them now. Hey guys, what's up? You're 30 minutes late. Come on, you can't even come to a video call in time. How on earth are you going to become a lawyer? That's funny coming from you, Brian. Don't talk to me about being punctual and coming on time for everything. When was the last time you actually went to university on time? That's right, never. You were always late for university. Every single day. Guys, come on! The call just started and you're already arguing! Kale, talk to us about your day. How was your first day living alone? Okay, I think we should just jump straight to the main topic. Did an officer come to our house to question you today? Oh, so you already know. Yep, I was questioned too. I'm really worried about mom. I wonder what happened to her. I hope she's alright, I really do. Well, I have one more way that we could find out. We can ask Uncle Joe and Aunt Blaze. <laughs> I promised myself that I would never see their faces ever again. If there's anyone who knows what mom was doing after she left us, it's them. And the people of Brookhaven Bank, of course. But no one would know her better than her own family. The police have probably already questioned them a lot, but maybe they're willing to share more with us since we're their family. <sighs> Fine, but we need to make it really quick. Oh well, you guys have fun on your trip. What are you going to do about this case, Kale? Are you going to help look for mom? I don't know. I still haven't decided. Quick, I don't want to stay here for too long. Hello, folks. How can I help you? Uncle Joe, it's been a while, hasn't it? Do you remember us? Uncle, holy guacamole. Wait a minute. Are you Brian and Jess? There's, there's no way. I thought I would never see you again. I thought so too, but here we are. <laughs> Well, come on in! We're really sorry about what Tessa did to you. She didn't even ask us before making the decision to leave you at the adoption center. She was going through some really stressful times back then, that's for sure. But we would have helped if we knew what she was going to do. Thanks, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We wanted to ask what mom did after she left us. What was her life like after that? What job does she have? And if you have any idea, please tell us. I'm surprised you're still willing to help her even after everything she did. But yes, after she left you, she was still going through a lot of stress. 
Not as much as before, but her stress levels were still high. She was constantly changing jobs, and she was living alone for five years straight. She eventually became one of the owners of Brookhaven Bank, but that was way later. She started feeling very lonely, and that's when she tried to look for you three at the adoption center. So mom did come back for us after all. Yes, she did. She came back to the adoption center and asked where you were. The employees working there aren't allowed to give the addresses of people that have adopted children there. So they didn't give any address to her, even though she is your biological mother. She tried really hard to find you, but she never could. Then she came back for us again very recently. That's what the officer that came to our house told us. She regretted her decision of leaving you kids at the end, but there was nothing she could do to make up for it. Since she didn't really know where you were, she was still feeling very lonely. Did mom make any enemies during the past few years? Someone that might have been interested in harming her in any way? Well, she would always tell us about how she had a lot of pressure from the government and a lot of criminals trying to threaten her and her bank. When you're working in a really high position like she was, you're probably going to get a lot of people trying to blackmail you. So I can't even imagine the stress your mom must have been going through. I don't know anyone in particular who would try to harm her, though. I can't think of anyone. Well, there was one person. I forget his name, but he was a lawyer. I think he was always talking to Tessa a lot and spending a lot of time with her. And last time I checked, he was also Tessa's manager. So he would help her organize her work and everything. If you don't remember his name, then it's not really of much help. But wait, you said he was a lawyer, right? So maybe Kale would know who he is. I mean, it's not a guarantee, but we can give it a shot. You don't have a name. You don't know how he looks. All you know is that he's a lawyer. And you expect me to know who he is? I don't know every lawyer in the world, Brian. Well, he apparently also used to be Mom's manager, so that might be something useful to consider. That's all that Uncle Joe and Uncle Clay's told us. We'll try looking into it more from our side. All right, I'll look up who a manager is right now. Never mind. I have a meeting right now. Bye. What is it that you wanted to discuss? And why is that person wearing a paper bag? Well, I'm afraid that things have started to get out of hand, Gale. I didn't expect these things to happen, so looks like you'll have to take some more desperate measures. What do you mean, sir? I'm confused. Take her mask off. So it was you all along? Are you the one who kidnapped Tessa? Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Been her manager for a while now. The only reason I became her manager was so that I could try to find a way to rob Brookhaven Bank. I used to be the biggest criminal in town, but I lost everything when the cops almost arrested me. So I had to get plastic surgery and start a new life. But the robber inside me was still itching to rob more banks. Then I created the perfect plan to kidnap Tessa without anyone suspecting me. And I thought I could force her to give me access to all the vaults in the bank, but she's one tough cookie. Then I started thinking, and I came up
came up with the idea that I'm gonna use you to my advantage. I don't think Tessa could handle it if something happened to her poor sweet daughter. Isn't that right, Tessa? You have five minutes, Tessa. Give me what I want or else. <laughs> oh gosh, that's not going to work. Mom doesn't care about me. Oh, you really think so? Well, there's only one way to find out. Oh my gosh, Kale, why are you here? What are they doing to you? Give me the passcodes that I want or you won't like what happens to your daughter. Choose wisely. No, no, stop it. Let her go. All right, then. It looks like you don't want to see your daughter ever again. Hey, you, do it. I want to make sure Tessa watches what happens to her. What? Why are the cops here? Put your hands where I can see them. Impossible. Ow. Was this your doing, Kale? <laughs> Maybe it was. Brian and Jess had a talk with Uncle Joe and Aunt Glaze the other day, and they told me about how there was a certain man that was getting really close to her. He was a lawyer, and after searching a bit, it turned out to be you. I thought about it for a while, and it all started to make sense. You were the one who kidnapped Tessa, but you were also one of the people leading the investigation. You were in the perfect position to hide Tessa and never let her be found. Of course, I wasn't sure of this. It was just a theory. But I informed the cops anyway, and I hid a speaker in my shirt. You meddling kid, I hate you! Sure you're all right, Kale? I was really worried about you. I'm fine. It's nothing. You and Brian didn't have to come all the way here just to ask me if I was all right. Yes, we did. We just wanted to make sure with our own eyes. I honestly don't know what to say to you kids. You've all grown up so much. You were so little the last time I saw you, and now you're all adults. I know you hate me, and I can understand. I would hate myself too if I were in your shoes. I was a terrible mother who didn't care for her children. I tried coming back for you after I realized the mistake I made, but by then it was too late. I couldn't find you, so I had to live with regretting what I did forever. But even after everything I did, you kids still came to help me out. You could have just ignored my situation completely and continue on with your life, but who chose to save me? Thank you, kids. I love you so much. Don't worry about it, Mom. Even after everything that's happened between us, you're still our mother in the end. All right, guys, let's go now. We've talked long enough. Oh, wait, thank you for trying to find me. I know you probably hate me the most out of you three, but you still chose to help me. No problem. I was just doing my job. Nothing more. I don't consider you as my mom. Oh, don't say that. It's fine, Brian. Let her say it. She's right after all. I was about to ask you kids if we could go back to being a family again, like we used to be, but I don't think that's possible. You're all grown up. And you were adopted into a new family. You can't leave them behind, right? Yep, we can't. And we won't. I can understand that. And Gail, I know that you'll never consider me as your mom. But all I ask is if, for one thing, all I need is your forgiveness, that's all. If you can just forgive me, that would be more than enough for me. I was an idiot for leaving you kids behind. And I'm really sorry for it. I truly regret my actions. I'm sorry for not being a good mom. I'm really sorry. Mom, don't cry. It's it's fine. I forgive you. Do you really forgive me? Yes, Mom, it's alright. 
things might never be the same again between us, but I'm glad that you've at least realized your mistake. I forgive you, Mom. Thank you so much, Kale. Thank you so much. I love you, Kale. I love all of you, Kale. I want to give you all a super big hug.